Oh, there we go. Now I'm back on. All right, welcome back to Fast Market here on the Schwab Network. I'm Tom White. Uh, let's uh, get, bring in our next guest for our cash tag segment. That's going to be Andy Swan, co-founder of Likefolio. Welcome back to the show, Andy. Hey, happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy March Madness to you, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, Kevin and I were talking about that game earlier. I know you're a big hoops guy. Uh, that, uh, that upset win by Oakland over Kentucky was pretty spectacular. Yeah, it was, and it's becoming a little bit too common of a sight here in the Bluegrass State. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Andy lives down in t uh, Kentucky. All right. Hey, Andy, we're talking Coinbase. We're talking Bitcoin, crypto. Uh, you know, we've see I, I get the, the I understand the moves that we've seen. Bitcoin just off all-time highs. We're starting to see some pullback there. But Coinbase really doesn't have a lot of competition yet. Is that the one thing that you'd be worried about with a name like Coinbase is that competition's coming because their margins are too big right now? Yeah, I would actually say that Coinbase is kind of caught uh, in, in two different headwinds and tailwinds and it's the exact same phenomenon and that is the Bitcoin spot ETFs. So while these are bringing in a lot of exposure, a lot of uh, interest, a lot of institutional investment into Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency space, they are actually competitors to Coinbase. You know, you don't have to open a Coinbase account in order to buy Bitcoin at this point. You can simply buy one of the uh, ETFs in your brokerage account and, and move on from there. So I, I think that from that perspective, it's an interesting dynamic. It's kind of a twofold dynamic at this point. We think ultimately this benefits Coinbase because more interest uh, in the sector is just overall a good thing. They can handle the competition. They've got a little bit of a regulatory moat around themselves. The other part of this, you know, from a um, from a trend perspective is that, you know, almost all of these ETFs, if not all of them, are using Coinbase uh, to make their purchases on the institutional side and to and to price the index that they're using to price their ETF. And so uh, Coinbase is right in the middle of everything. It's a player uh, in every part of this. And overall, we think the more eyes that are coming to Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency space, the better it is for Coinbase well into the foreseeable future. Andy, right now, I think of Coinbase and I look at its correlation to crypto. And yep. if you read about Coinbase, they'll tell you that they're trying to diversify so it's not all just transaction volume and when and riding the wave up and down with crypto. It yep. looks like they're, they're diversifying. They're getting some subscription products, custodial services, stable coin interest, other things to, to make transactions only about half of their revenue. Is it enough? Can we trust this stock to trade without a link to Bitcoin? I, I don't think that it'll ever get there. I, or if it does, it'll be a long way away. You know. The, the one thing that gives me a little bit more hope uh, for Coinbase, and we've been bullish on Coinbase for quite a while and continue to be so, uh, but what I really liked to see was when Bitcoin was hitting all-time highs and it was in the headlines and the Coinbase went down. You know, they failed to service their customers. They, um, you know, the buy button wasn't there. It looked like your account had no... Uh, Bitcoin in it. There was just, just server errors that were uh, fairly traumatic at that moment. But ultimately, because of the trust that they've built in the community, it wasn't a complete freak out moment for their customers. It was, okay, they'll be back up. Let's just wait. This doesn't make me happy, but it's not so bad that I'm you know, going to leave the platform. And so I think uh, overall, Coinbase is handling uh, these growth cycles very well. But I don't think that they can completely decouple themselves from the popularity or even the price of Bitcoin overall. Uh, I'm not sure ultimately that they would want to. I think uh, we're in a really good spot where a lot of these could be, um, you know, could could be soaring for quite some time. But if not, uh, then I then I think Coinbase is going to have trouble uh, decoupling from that price action. I think. It's, it's just natural that when eyes are on crypto, 
they're going to be on Coinbase. The sure. two go hand in hand. It's very difficult to see that changing anytime soon. And you see that a lot in these markets. Yeah, and, yeah. and yeah, I think Coin, Coinbase wants to be on the back of Bitcoin. Crude and the momentum. energy, I mean, there's a lot of correlations. Like right, that. and the momentum here, Andy, if you, I, I looked at some of your year-over-year -year mentions, uh, whether it's Ether or, or Bitcoin, those are massive numbers. But on your other mentions, uh, up 70% uh, on the year-over-year uh, -year on Coinbase, now we're starting to see that stock get up close to those mentions. Does that kind of worry you when we've seen such a, a big move over the last 12 months? Yeah, they, you know, there's kind of twofold on this as well. You know, I think um, you're starting to see acceleration in Coinbase mentions, uh, which you haven't seen for a while, which is a good thing. You've also seen the stock rally up, like you said, very considerably, you know, hitting that blue line. We do think that this is a place where uh, you know, Coinbase is very fairly valued, could see some consolidation here. It really now becomes, again, a bet on Bitcoin or crypto. The one thing I would say, you know, looking at uh, Bitcoin search volume uh, historically, I think is really a an interesting story here because we've got Bitcoin, like you said, in the last three weeks, it's hit brand new highs, pulling back a little bit now, but brand new highs. But if you look at search volume of Bitcoin, it is less than half of where it was at the prior peak. And so this is not a mania situation. This is not, you know, a, a complete FOMO situation. There is still a lot of retail exposure that is out there waiting. And I think Coinbase, if if Bitcoin can get through this, you know, kind of basically exodus from the grayscale ETF and start making new highs, then Coinbase could be um, really set up really nicely after this consolidation period. All right. Uh, great, great stuff. Great data as always, Andy. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. That's Andy Swan, co-founder at Like Folio, breaking down Coinbase and Bitcoin and the momentum, the moves, the volatility. I mean, that's the, that's one of the things you better be prepared if you're trading Bitcoin.